In this video, I'm going to give you my 100% comprehensive Amazon PPC optimization process. I've developed this process over the last few years working with thousands of Amazon brands, and I've verified that this works with sellers of all sizes in all categories from every marketplace. I'll show you how I implement this process in real life using a real Amazon account, and I'll screen share everything so that you understand all the details. Let's jump right in. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to show you is how to optimize your ads based on product level data. So the very first thing we're going to do is head into business reports on Amazon, and we're going to go into the buy ASIN detailed page sales and traffic page. We're just going to hit export over here. You want to put your time period to last 30 days. So today is the 24th. You just want to do 24th this month to 24th the month before, and you're just going to hit download. Right. Then after that, you're going to head into campaign manager and you're going to go to the products page over there and you're going to export your numbers. Right. So we're going to combine advertising numbers and we're also going to combine the regular business report numbers. Then you're just going to put both of these on an Excel sheet and you'll um, you'll set them out as I have done over here. Uh, so I have all of my ASINs. Then I have their 30 day revenue. This is from my business reports. Then I have ad spend. This is from the product report and campaign manager. Then I have tacos, which is ad spend divided by 30 day revenue. Then I have margin. This is margin after FBA, referral fee, uh, landed cost and everything. This is everything before ads essentially. Then I have net profit, which is margin minus tacos. So this is net profit after ads. Then I have sales contribution and I have spend contribution. So sales contribution is the percentage of total sales that this one product um, this one product creates. So 375,000 divided by total sales gives me, uh, gives me 14%. Uh, over here, 12% is the contribution for spend. So 12% of the account's total ad spend is happening on this one product, right? So you're just going to do this for every single product that you have in the sheet. Then we're going to start labeling these. Uh, so I want to label a few things. Number one is products where I'm not making money. So I have these labeled in red. That's when the tackles is higher than the net margin. So you're actually losing money. This is one example. This is another example. I'm losing 6.5% here, uh, almost 3% here, 6.5% here, and, here, and so on. Uh, another thing you want to label is products where you're making money, but the percentage that you're making isn't that high. So over here for this account, I've done anything under 8% net profit. And this is because this is a generally high margin account. So over here, this is at 27%, 19%, 23%, and so on. And this goes through the entire catalog. And if I see anything under 8%, I'm typically going to flag that. Right? So this is 2.5%. This is super low for this account. This is 5 and a quarter. Right? So I flagged all of these and I've labeled them in orange. Then the final thing you want to do is flag ASINs where your spend contribution is higher than your sales contribution. Right? So over here, this gets 42% of the account's total spend, but it's only producing 12% of the sales. So proportionately, we're spending three to four times more than we should on this ASIN. Right? And actually, just looking at these numbers, I'm pretty sure it's clear from, what this, uh, from this point what you're supposed to do. Uh, if you have something that's unprofitable, where your spend contribution is higher than your sales contribution, you're going to want to go in and actually decrease the spend on this. Right? So over here, we're losing 6%. On our sales, we have around 20,000 a month in sales, so we're losing 1,200 a month on this. And we're spending three times as much in ads on this as we should, because we're getting 0.67% of our total sales from this ASIN, but almost 2% of the spend is coming from this. So this is something I'm definitely going to optimize. Again, over here, this is spending 42% of our budget, and we're only making 2% net profit on this. Of course, we do make a good amount of sales on this, 325,000 to be specific. Uh, but, you know, with these margins, that's only like six and a half, seven thousand dollars in profit. And for this much in spend, like sixty thousand dollars, we could probably reallocate this budget to a bunch of the other ASINs that are performing better. Like this one's at a four and a half percent tackles, three hundred seventy five thousand in sales. This is at one hundred seventy thousand in sales with a six percent tackles. So we could redistribute this budget elsewhere. So we have a couple ways of redistributing this budget. Uh, the first way is we're going to head back into campaign manager. Right. And we're just going to go in and we're going to put our ASIN in the actual search bar. And this requires you to have good naming structure, because if you haven't put your ASIN in the actual campaign name, you won't be able to do this step. So I suggest going back and make sure you have that set up first. 
Uh, if you do, you just go in and you put it and it will show you all of the campaigns that you have set up for this ASIN. And then you can just go in. We're going to start adding filters. I already have one ready, which is the active status. We're not going to optimize campaigns that aren't active. So I have that in. Uh, after that, I'm typically going to add a ACOS filter. So I want to look at my highest ACOS campaigns. So generally, I'd look at what my average ACOS is for this ASIN. So it's 36%. Then I'd look at anything above 36%. Let me just go in. Greater than 36. Right Now we have all of the above average ACOS campaigns. Uh, we have one for this ASIN specifically. So I'd probably go in and I'd look at how much it's spending. It's spending $1,500 a month right, at a 45% ACOS. And the entire ASIN was at 36%. So I'd probably go in and I'd create a bulk action. And I'll go in and I'll just um, decrease the budget for this. Right? Or you can just decrease the budget manually. Right? So instead of 60, I might go in and I might say, this month we're doing 50 a day. Right? Our spend is 1500 so are you doing 50 a day technically? So in this case, I'd probably go and I'd say something like 40 a day or 30 a day, right? So this decreases our investment in this ASIN, which decreases spend contribution and can bring you back down to profitability. So that's the first way of doing it. The second way is you got all of the campaigns um, that you have over here, right? And you're going to export this. And I'm going to show you why in a second is you're going to go into targeting tab. You're going to add a filter for active status. So target active status enabled. Uh, then you're going to add campaign active status. Again, enabled. You don't want to optimize anything that we aren't running anyways. Then you're going to go in and you're going to do campaigns and ad groups. You're going to start adding the campaigns and ad groups uh, for that ASIN, right? I don't have to export it if you don't want to. Like you could also just put your ASIN name here and everything will show up. But I like just copy pasting it to make sure I got everything. So let's just pretend that these are our campaigns. And I'll add these in. And these are all of the keywords that we have, right? Then similarly, uh, you're going to go in and you're going to filter by ACOS above average. Let's say ACOS greater than 36%, right? And in this case, you could do a bulk bit change. You right? don't have anything above 36% uh, for the selected campaigns. Then you'd go in and you'd do sales equals zero, right? Sales is equal to zero. Right? And then you're going to order these by spend. You click again, order these by spend. You want to do last 30 days. Right? And you can see none of these have spent this much. Um, so this has spent a dollar. Uh, this one has spent 36 cents. So none of these are actual trouble keywords. Generally, if something has spent your product's price without converting, you want to start looking into it, right? So that's pretty much it. So that's the, uh, I guess, negative side of it. Uh, on the other end, you can look at things above a certain net profit. So anything above like 20% for this account I'd look at. Then you can label these green, for example. You can look for ASINs where your sales contribution is higher than your spend contribution. And you can go in and you can do the opposite. So you can go in and you can raise budgets. You can go in and you can um, add new keywords, create new campaigns, increase bids to get some spend flowing. So you can either do this to conserve spend by cutting out wasteful campaigns, decreasing their budgets, and cutting out keywords that are burning money. Or you can do the growth side of this, which is identifying ASINs which are profitable and which are spending less than they should be and investing more money in them. Okay, so the next strategy we have is optimizing your bids. Ideally, you should be doing this weekly. If you have a smaller account or very high average order value products, you could wait a bit longer. But ideally, this should be done daily or weekly for the best results. So over here, you have a couple ways uh, of doing this. One way is automated, which is what we do through our software. Other way is fully manual. Um, so over here, what we do is you're going to go back into the um, targeting tab. And we're going to set up a couple filters. So target active status again, enabled. Campaign active status enabled. Right? And then what you want to do is have an ASIN sheet prepared. So what I do generally is I have a sheet with all of my products that I'm going to optimize bids for, which should generally be every single product you're advertising. And then I have my ACOS target, right, which is 30% over here. And I have the campaigns, 
that we're actually using right now. Right, and I have this for every single target. I have two examples here. So this one's a 30% target campaign. The other one's a 25% target campaign. And I have all of my campaign names ready. I'm gonna show you why we're gonna need this in a second. So you're gonna go back into the targeting tab. And we're gonna add another filter, which is the campaigns and ad groups filter. So again, you're gonna add this in. Uh, you can just copy paste them one by one. So these are just example names, so nothing's gonna show up. But you can go in one by one over here, control C, control V, right? And it will show up. You just select them one by one, and it will display all of the targets that you have for that ASIN. And this is crucial because you want to have ASIN level targets. If you just do like broad bid changes for the entire targeting for your whole account, you're going to end up with a bunch of random changes because each product needs its own bid change and its own ACOS target. So this is the first step. After that, you're going to filter again by ACOS target. Uh, and you're going to go in, you're going to say like above whatever your target is, you're just going to say 30%. Right, above 30%, we have all of these keywords. Then you can order these by spend. This one's at 46% right now, this one's at 34%. So a bunch of these are significantly above target. And then you just want to select the ones that are similar in terms of ACOS, probably 40%, 46%, uh, let's see, 48%. 47%. You want to select these ones and you want to go in and you're going to do another bulk action. You're going to adjust bid. You're going to drop it by a percentage that's equal to the distance between the current ACOS and the ACOS target. So over here, I could do something like 20% on average for these keywords. Right? Decrease bids by 20%. After that, you're just going to keep going down the list, finding keywords that are similar. So this is 34%. Right, this one over here is 31%, 34, 34, and again, you're just going to drop these by 10% perhaps, and uh, that will be it. At the other end of this, you can also do under 30, and you're going to go in. You're going to do the opposite pretty much. You're going to find keywords that are spending a decent amount that are currently under your target. It's going to group the ones that are performing similarly. So 20%, 18, 18 and a half, 18.35, 19.4. And you're going to group all of these. You're going to do a bulk action. And you could increase these by like 33%, for example. Right? So you have this way of doing this. And you're going to go down your entire catalog one by one. And if you have 100 products, that's just what's going to, what it's going to take. Um, or you can go into the software and you can do this automatically. So all you have to do is you just go in and you add a filter for the actual ASIN that you have. So over here, I put this one in and it will show you all of the campaigns, assuming that you have that ASIN and the campaign name. Then you can just bulk select everything, right? And you just hit autopilot, you switch it on, you add your ACOS target, so save, ACOS target, and that's it. And you can choose increase sales, lower ad costs, I'm going to do lower ad costs. You just hit this. Uh, and yeah, that's it. Pretty much all of these campaigns are being automated right now. Every single keyword is being checked on a daily basis to make sure that one, uh, it's performing properly and it's spending, and two, whether it's above or below the ACOS target. And if it's above or below, it will either increase or decrease bids to get it to the ACOS target automatically for you. And you can do this on a product level, on an account level, on a portfolio level. So it's all automated for you and you don't have to keep switching between the sheet and targeting tab every single day to make sure that your bits get optimized. Okay, so the next strategy I'm going to show you is keyword harvesting and negation. So for this strategy, the first thing you're going to do is go into Campaign Manager and open up the measurement and reporting section. Go to Sponsored Edge Reports. And you're going to hit Create Report and make a search term report for sponsored product for the last 30 days. Then you're going to open it up in the Google Sheet. And I have this one already downloaded. You're just going to put a couple of filters in. So the first filter is going to be for harvesting. So you're going to go in you're going to look at units sold. So seven day total units. You're just going to unselect zero. This is anything that has sold above zero units in the last 30 days. Then what you're going to do is you're going to scroll back to match type and you're going to exclude anything in exact match. Right. Exact match is gone. Uh, then over here, what you have is a list of search terms that have produced sales for you in the last 30 days, right? 
So what you're going to do is you're going to look at the search term and compare it to the source keyword. And if they're different, you want to keep a separate sheet with potential um, search terms that you can use as keywords. So over here, this search term just says search term. These are all example search terms, obviously. So this one just says search term. The targeting, which is the keyword, says butter. So this is unique. I'm going to go in over here. I'm going to put the keyword in. So our keyword is search term. Is it an exact match? I'm going to go into targeting tab. I'm going to search it up. Search term, right? It's obviously not going to show up because this is just an example. But yeah, it hasn't shown up. So no, this isn't an exact match. Has it shown up in broad? No, it's not in broad. Has it shown up in phrase? Again, not in phrase. Let me check the CPC because we're going to use this as our starting bit. And then over here, let me just scroll. So our CPC is 27 cents. So I'm going to add that in, 27 cents, right? Then you can see the campaign name and the ad group it came from. And if it checks all the boxes, it produced the sale. Uh, it's not in any of the match types and it's not similar to the actual source keyword. Uh, you're just going to go back into the same campaign and the same ad group and you're going to add it in. Right? Unless it's an auto campaign, then you're going to have to go and add that search term into another manual campaign. That's harvesting. Uh, you can also do negation. So let me just remove a few of these filters. Uh, for negation, you're just going to do the opposite. So you're just going to go in and you're going to select everything. Sorry, deselect everything but zero. So this is anything that hasn't produced sales. And then you're going to go into spend. And you're going to add a condition. So filter by condition. Greater than. And you can choose your own number, obviously. You can do spend or you can do clicks. Uh, if you have a bunch of products that are at different average order values, I probably do clicks. Uh, if they're all around the same average order value, you can just do spend is equal to product average order value. Right? So if it's $20, you say $20 or greater. If you don't have that, uh, you can go into clicks. And you can do whatever is above your average conversion rate. So if you have an average conversion rate of 10%, you want to do anything with 10% or more. Yes, select all. Greater than or equal to 10. Right? So this is anything with 10 or more clicks that hasn't produced any sales. Yes, go in. Uh, clear zero. Right? So over here, you have a couple of search terms. Um, this one has spent 15, for example. And it hasn't produced anything for us. So this is something we'd probably negate. And you just go back into the same ad group and same campaign and negate it. So ad group one, campaign name example. And just go and add it as a negative uh, directly in campaign manager. And you just want to do this at least once a month to make sure you're not wasting money on any bad search terms. Of course, you can also automate this. So through our platform, you can just go in, select whatever campaign you want to harvest from, and then you just specify the match type that you want and the destination campaign. So I want to harvest anything in exact match to this campaign uh, called X, Y, and Z in ad group one. And it just goes there automatically. Broad ad group one, phrase ad group one in this campaign. You can also do ASIN. Then you can also set up negation automatically. So over here, negation works on a multiple of spend. So it actually calculates it for you automatically. So if you usually spend $10 to acquire a customer, we can automatically say like, hey, 1.7 times that, which is 17 bucks, is too much to spend without getting a sale. And we just negate it for you automatically. So instead of having to go in and download the search term report, add filters, find the campaigns, verify if the keywords in there or not, and then go and add the negative, you can just set these um, parameters up once and it keeps running for your campaigns every single day. So you guys don't have to waste money anymore on bad search terms. And you also get like an endless flow of keywords in from your auto campaigns, your broad and your freeze campaigns. Okay, so the last strategy we have is a segmentation strategy. where We're going to split up the ads for any product by ad type and match type. to Discover where you're getting your best returns and allocate your budget accordingly. So over here, we're just going to head back into campaign manager. You're just going to put your ASIN in the search bar again to see all the campaigns that you have running for it. Then you're going to add another filter on top of the active status filter that we already have. Um, and you're going to filter for ad type. So over here, let me just find it. Right, type. Over here, we're going to filter for sponsored product first. 
And you're going to take note of your metrics. 2,000 spend, 5,000 in sales, ACOS is 36%. Let's do sponsored display. No data, we're not running any sponsored display. Let's take sponsored brand. No data, so we're not running anything besides sponsored product. As a general rule, you want to try to run 85% sponsored product, 10% sponsored brand, and 5% sponsored display. Um, that's just like the benchmark. After that, you want to look at individual performance. So what you're going to see is sponsored product performs at a certain ACOS, and you're spending a certain amount on it, and you're getting a certain return. Sponsored brand, same goes for sponsored brand. Certain ACOS, certain spend, certain return. And same goes for sponsored display as well. What you want to do is play with budgets and keywords and search terms and everything in those ad types to get the best performance. So if I ran sponsored brand for this ASIN and I saw it's running at a 45% ACOS, whereas my sponsored product was running at a 36% ACOS or a 30% ACOS, I might start decreasing budget on my sponsored brand campaigns and moving some keywords into sponsored products if I don't already have them there, right? Again, if I'm not running any sponsored display or sponsored brand, I'd probably start by launching campaigns first. And then once those spend, based on ACOS and everything else, you can go back in and make a few changes to direct your ad budget to the right ad type based on returns, spend, and sales, as mentioned before. Uh, after that, you can also take the campaigns for this ASIN using the campaigns and ad groups filter that we mentioned earlier. And you can put them into the targeting tab. Right, so we're just going to select everything here. Uh, then you can also add a filter called targeting tip. This is actually just match type. And then you can actually filter out each match type individually. So our exact match, for example, is performing at this ACOS, 20%. We're going to go in. And we'll see our phrase match. It's performing at a different ACOS probably. So this is at 22% ACOS, not that big of a difference. Some accounts you'll see like a 5, 10, 15% ACOS difference. And over here, broad is at 19%. So these are all pretty similar. For your account, you might see a bigger difference. This account is being optimized on the regular, which is why all of the numbers are super close. But essentially what I do is if I see one match type is higher than the other, I'll start doing bid decreases on any keyword above the average ACOS for the other two match types. And at the same time, I might pause a few of the targets in there that aren't doing super well. Or if it's a broad or a phrase, I might go in and start adding negatives. Because usually if it's not doing well in broader phrase, you might be showing up for bad search terms. If something's doing exceptionally well, I'll go in and I'll do like a bulk select for anything at or below the current ACOS. And I'm going to do a bulk adjustment. I'm going to adjust bid maybe increase it by 10%, right, to start getting more spend in. So increase by 10%. Uh, then you might go in and add more keywords. So you can see the number of targets for each match type. So we have 1,800 in exact, or sorry, in broad. And then you can go in and you can select exact. And you can see that for this ASIN, we have a bit more in broad. So we have 2,712. So if I see exact is doing better than broad, that means I have an additional 900 keywords that I'd be looking to add into broad, right? So see how this works. If something's doing well, we add more keywords, we increase bids, might increase even like the budget on the campaigns that these keywords exist in. If something's doing bad, you start pausing bad keywords, start adding negatives, and you start dropping bids. This makes sure that you're spending your money on the match type that gives you the best return, and also make sure that you have a pretty good divide between them. All right, guys, that's all five strategies. Uh, this works super well. I've done this for thousands of accounts. As I mentioned, start testing today. Go into Campaign Manager and make a couple changes. Reach out to me on LinkedIn or my email, safe at aihello.com. If you have any questions or if you test this out and you need more clarification on some of the results that you've been seeing, uh, if you want to automate any of this, as you already know, you can check out my software, www.aihello.com, and you can book a call there. Either me or someone else will pick it up. I will give you a full tour of the platform. Thank you so much for watching this video and I'll see you guys again next week.